Hello traders, let's take a good look at these markets and unravel what is going on here. Now, at the moment, uh, this market is happy to keep grinding higher. We get little sideways actions, we get a push higher, a pullback, a push higher. So yeah, we're zigzagging up. And so this was the uh, market forming a base. This, these are pullbacks in what is still an uptrend. So don't let anybody, including me, get you too bearish at this stage. Uh, I am shorting highs to see if they work. If they don't work, then I back off. For example, um, I have a small position in a June contract short on this one, the FTSE, but this is pretty much, you know, every tiny little pullback just gets bought. The market seems to love the FTSE. The wheat pound is doing it a huge favour. So we had a big drop into 22nd of March, Thursday, an immediate pin bar, an inverted pin bar, what I call a stopping bar here, and every little pullback has been bought. You get a couple of green bars, one red bar, cup two or three green bars, sideways red bar, two or three green bars, two or three green bars, etc. Okay, so we've had a couple of red bars, and now we've got a couple of green bars. We are extended, and <clears throat> you know, I do think we are potentially running out of steam, but this is crossing back through the midline, this is crossing back to the upside, so we're not done yet. 80.32 could be a target here. That's why I've only taken a small position on the short side, because it's counter trend. Uh, if I start to get a close lower tomorrow, then uh, it's Fed minutes tomorrow, so that's why I will then concentrate on the short side. See if we can break close under 77.85 and see if we can retrace but in the meantime we although we are extended we are still climbing higher now we're getting away from the moving averages and so one way to, to determine whether you're on a decent trend or not is to look at the 20 day average look at this 20 that's one of the straightest 20 day averages you you're going to get to see so we are holding away from that 20 day average ever since we had uh, a nice pin bar on it here early April at some stage we are going to back down so here is a situation where we kept climbing higher got uh, a low MACD reading went through the midline crossed over <clears throat> and then every little pullback got shorted. So we are potentially running out of steam. We are very extended as well, we weren't very extended here, but we were certainly extended away from the 20 day average. At some stage we're going to want to come and find that 20 day average. Markets just do that. So that's why I will short uh, in small position and then get aggressive when we finally get the breakdown of that trend line. But in the meantime, we could still accelerate, we could make our way up to that 80.32 all the time we are in that mood. So let's look at the DAX. The DAX is beginning to get that same sort of feel to it, that same, same sort of look to it. There's the 20 day moving average. Uh, so far, every little pullback is still getting bought. Ever since we had this reversal pattern here, new low, close above on Monday, that put in the floor on the markets, and we only get a very few little sideways pauses, and then we keep going up, pause up, pause up. Okay, uh, this is definitely lower momentum at the moment, but if this crosses, this could this could surge up to 13 and a half. 
I think the time to look for a short is probably going to be middle to late June. But obviously I'll vary that depending on what the market shows me. If we look at last year, uh, here is May last year. So all the pullbacks got bought in May last year. And then we didn't finally crack until the end of June. That's what I think you know, mid to late June is what's going to happen here. Dipped, started to wave our way down, formed a base, and then started to wind our way up again. And we started to push up late August. And that very same pattern is what I would expect now. Let me just delete all of that. Put the fibs back. Okay, so we're sitting on this above this fib, fib zone at the moment. So let's see what we want to do. Now, uh, a key reversal pattern for me is three wave, which we had there. Now we breached the th third wave and immediately closed lower on the 24th of Jan. So if we spurt higher and immediately close lower, I will then definitely get short. In the meantime, like I said, this is getting away from some of the key averages. Markets love to revert to the mean, but this is not ready yet. And uh, tomorrow could be telling. Well, I don't know. It's it's at this stage, it's hard to say. And all the time we are pulling higher, then be careful. Now this is a little harder to call because we've got this gap, and. I think there's more potential for the short side at the moment uh, until we close the gap, potentially come back in contact with 550, 500, and then we might get the last leg up before we get tired and run our steam potentially mid to late June. Let's look at last year again. We were pretty flat last year. Very shallow moves last year. Um, so we had this pattern here. So we, here we are, late June. We started to, we're sitting above the 20 day average, started to get lower, came down to the 50 day average. And then here, late August. We just dipped underneath the 50 day average, immediately closed higher, and then went on a run. So, if the market is very bullish, that's what we should expect. If the market is very bearish, and we had this market of closed under here, I would have started shorted big time to at least take it down to the 20 to the 200 day average. It didn't. It started closing higher and dips all started getting bought. So same scenario here. If we get to a resistance level and 25, 300, 25, 860 is an area where I would be very, very uh, attentive to uh, possibility of shorting up there, uh, then I would uh, start shorting, and if we've got confirmation, hang on to it. All right, so that's where we are at the moment. Now, because of the gap situation in this this DAO, uh, DAO sorry, um, yeah, I am shorting the highs and looking to at least get down to seven hundred. It may, if it's really bullish, it may only come down to eight. 8850 if it's really bullish. Uh, talking of gaps, it reminded me that the euro US dollar has a gap which has never been filled to my way of thinking. 
and it's here. To me, that will not get closed until we get to 107.33. Um, so we gapped up on the Sunday the 23rd, dipped on Monday the 24th, and every dip pretty much ever since there until we broke that trend line. Uh, all the dips started getting bought. It's a decent pattern, isn't it? It's a very interesting study here. So there's a three wave reversal. So strong is it? So many people must have been holding long so they gapped it up, pulled back to 108, and then just started zigzagging and never looked back. Uh, I think it was here, I did a, was in a conference in Eastern Europe and I was interviewed in front of a camera and somebody said to me how long before the Euro gets to parity and I said whoa, whoa, whoa hold on I think the Euro is going to surprise you and sure enough it did, it actually reversed and then we get this sweet move up here and of course since we've had this, since we broke down here uh, then we've had the um, complete sort of capit capitulation as far as uh, we are down to 118, just under 118 as we speak. Um, so where do we go from here? Well, while I've got the euro up on the screen, where do we go from here? Um, well, let's fib the whole thing. Includes the gap. So you can see this is major fib support up here. So the high was 12560. We just come in contact with a decent support level at 117012. Um, so this if we start the highs are still selling. Every time at the moment, every time we touch the 20-day average. We sell. We didn't quite get to it at the high on Monday 14th. Uh, but don't be put off by this higher close. At the moment, all the time, the highs keep selling, then keep selling them. All right, because the US is much, much more likely to increase interest rates than the Eurozone, so yeah, don't wait for that to reverse. I think a full-blown reversal is going to look like uh, we are extremely divergent and, and uh, low down here in the MACD. Yeah, that can indicate a reversal. There's a reversal of the MACD there, head and shoulders in the, in the MACD. So we had shoulder, head, shoulder, and then burst up. So at the moment we've got a little bit of a shoulder, potential head. We get another shoulder. Then we could start to uh, pick up. So this low is just around, just close to 115, and this 50% is just above 114, 11450 in fact. Um, that's going to be a very tough area, 120, if we if we get up there. We're not actually that far off. We're only 225 pips off of that. So it's possible we get, uh, yeah, this is effectively wave 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Could take us all the way down here. The ECB are reluctant to start to commit themselves to any kind of date on uh, rate rises. So let's see. Obviously, it's very, very good support. So if we start closing higher and start closing above 119, then 
you know, the, the selling could temporarily be over. And of course, at the moment, you've got the flip side with the DAX. The DAX is a complete reverse of this. We've got the 50 and the 2200 underneath us in the DAX, whereas here everything's above us. Right, so let's have a look at the pound. Um, we are out of a major <coughs> channel here, not holding. And all moving averages above us. We've got a crossover in the 20 and the 50 up here. We've got a crossover in the 20 and the 200 here. So are we heading, are we going to see any upside soon? Tomorrow is going to be key, but at the moment keep selling highs. MACD is low, we're above the midline, but keep selling the highs. The weekly uh, has come back to the 50 day average for the first time since November 17, November last year. So, a close above that 50 day average could trigger. The bulls could get the bulls working on that one, but at the moment the dollar is dominant and there is no reversal pound yen. Um, I do like the way we are we're above the 20 day average here. And that is a potential pin bar, an inverted hammer. So I'm just beginning to think that we could start to see some reversal here. Pattern, let's do a wave count. Well, we've had a, a one, two, three wave at the moment. Uh, this is wave four, and wave five could take us at least into this resistance area, at least. Um, the, for the bears, if we close under 148, we've had it. Could break down here and come and see one, four, five pretty quick. What do I think is going to happen? I think we will start to close above one four nine, retest one fifty, and if we can push higher, close higher, then I think we can get going. Right. If you classify this essentially wave one. That's the main wave two. We are potentially into wave three. Potentially to take us all the way to get close to the top of this channel. So pound yen is one of my favourite charts. It is my favourite forex chart at the moment, and I'm just waiting for more confirmation on that. But a close under 148, and we are done, potentially done. Okay, uh, now let's have a look at, before we go, let's have a look at this chart here. This is the five year US Treasury notes. And we are attempting to reverse. So if we hold here, if we start keep closing, keep holding 113, obviously tomorrow it's uh, Fed minutes. If we can close above 113, then I think the Dow has a much, and the US indices have a much higher chance of, of staying higher. Uh, if we test 113 and start selling, then I think that's going to be very, very hard for the indices, particularly the Dow, to hold up. All right, so with the FTSE still not putting a, a sell signal in, it's, it's certainly right at the top of this weekly resistance, right up there. May pick a little higher. If we pick a little higher and then start closing lower, then we definitely need to get short and stay short. 
that this is def this is a key number that we are diverging up here and we have had nine weeks of higher closes. So that's why I'm on high alert for the FTSE. Okay, um, let's just retrace a little bit and talk about the 15 minute chart on the DAX. 15 minute, when I did the Scalp School update, my main priority was to try and get you to use the 15 minute chart to uh, its full extent. Now I have to admit, I didn't exploit this this morning, but it's always that bit tougher when it happens so late in the session, but unfortunately this is quite typical. 10.45, we get 11 o'clock, we get a higher close here. That's, confirma that's confirmation for me that that could hold. 11, 12 o'clock, we bought, get bought, and we spend most of the day all pullbacks getting bought. And we didn't quite get to the 20 second extension when we got close. So watch out for that, particularly um, watch out for that as it happens later in the morning. And we so often see little indecisive moves in, in the main part of the Euro section. And then just as everybody takes a break and walks away from the screens, they start to move it up when nobody's looking in reversal time. Right, uh, I do hope that helps. I'll see you in the trading room tomorrow. Bye.